for joining me for this week's EdTech Tuesday video. This week we're going to be looking at some more of the great features in YouTube that are helpful to teachers in their classrooms. I've chosen a video that I'd like to show to my class. I open the video in YouTube and now we're going to look at some of the features that are available to me. The first option we're going to look at is closed captioning. Closed captioning is the CC in the white box on the bottom right corner of the screen. Clicking on this button will toggle on and off the closed captioning for the video. You cannot access any of the features for closed captioning, but it will turn it on and off with this button. To access the closed captioning features, you have to click on the gear icon to the right of the closed captioning button. Here you can set the different types of options that you have for subtitles. If a video is available in another language, this is where that language will appear. You also have some options for how your subtitles look. You can change the font type, color, and size. In a large classroom with a small television, changing the closed captioning size to a larger size can be very helpful. You can also change the opacity. This is for the bar that appears behind the words. You can make it 100% or you could make it zero or somewhere in between. A third option is to change the speed of a video. You can, all, you can go all the way down to playing a video at a quarter time its original speed. You can also speed it up to be one and a half times its original speed as well. Finally, you can look at the quality of the video. This means that if you want to play a video at a lower quality than it's originally intended, YouTube will allow you to do that. This is especially helpful when you're having Wi-Fi or network issues. Another place to look for features of YouTube is in the three dots underneath the video. If you click on this, you have three options. Report means that you're reporting the video to YouTube for objectionable content. Clicking on Open Transcript brings up a transcript of all of the narration in the video to the right side of the video. If you click on one of these time-stamped phrases, it will jump directly to that place in the video. Here, I'm clicking on this section of the video, and if I hover over the video, you'll see that it's jumped directly to that place in the video. If I go back up in the transcript and I click on a different one, you'll see that it's jumped back to that point in the video. As you use this feature, keep in mind that transcripts are often auto-generated. This means that a computer is the one translating the narration into words. Sometimes this results in errors. It's a good idea to not completely rely on the transcript's accuracy. If you don't want to see the timestamps, you do have the option of turning those off and it creates just the transcript itself. The share menu is also a great place to look for an interesting feature of YouTube. Here, we normally go to share a video via social media or to copy and paste the link. However, just underneath that link is an option to start the shared video at a certain place. So what I like to do is pause the video where I'd like to start it when I share it with someone, and then I click on the share button, and underneath there's a checkbox. And now my video, when I share it, will start at 3 minutes and 11 seconds. When I copy this link and test it out in a new tab, you'll see that my video is going to start exactly at that place, 3 minutes and 11 seconds. The only drawback to this feature is that in a very long video, you don't have the option of the video stopping at any particular point. So let's say you wanted to share the State of the Union address with your students, but you only wanted them to see a 15 minute chunk in the middle of that video. You could start it where you wanted to start it, but you cannot end it in any particular place. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching.